over time again? Hasn't it been too frequent lately? I pointed out my husband's excessive overtime. My husband runs a vegetable wholesaling company. I've been working alongside him to support the business. However, recently he had been working late into the night every day. I was concerned about his excessive overtime. That's why I brought it up. But my husband frowned and responded irritably Shut up! There is no helping it. The recent high prices are affecting us. I'm working hard to protect our company, so don't complain. Then I will help with the overtime. When I suggested that, my husband widened his eyes and shook his head in a fluster. No, you should go home and rest. I'm enough by myself. I can concentrate better when I'm working alone. He spoke as if I were a hindrance, which secretly irritated me. But I heard that the business similar to ours fell victim to a robbery. Working alone late into the night during such times, when I mentioned that, my husband chuckled. It's just a coincidence that another business was targeted. You worry too much. It's annoying when you are like that. Forget about me and go home to sleep. You're getting in the way of work. My husband pushed me out of the office. Reluctantly, I said, take care, and left. But I couldn't help but worry. Maybe I should install more security cameras and take precautions. While pondering this, I looked back at the office. That's when I noticed some moving shadows in the darkness. What is that? Ah! My name is Violet, and I'm 39 years old. I currently run a vegetable wholesaling company with my husband Frank. We had an arranged marriage, and our relationship has been relatively good. My late in-laws also appreciated and cherished me, saying that a capable daughter-in-law had come. Thanks to that, I was well regarded by those around me at my husband's company. After my father-in-law passed away, my mother-in-law and the board members had a discussion and decided to have my husband and me take over the company. There was a strong trust from the employees, and they would sometimes jokingly say things like, as long as Violet is here, everything will be fine. Even after my mother-in-law passed away, my husband and I worked hard, even though we had our disagreements at times. On this day, I had been complaining to my husband when I arrived at work. Since my husband didn't help with household chores, I ended up expressing my discontent in a stern tone. In response, one of the employees jokingly remarked, The president is completely under Violet's control, isn't he? I'm not really bossing him around. I'm just asking him to take out the trash before going to work. And putting socks in the washing machine without rolling them up is something obvious, right? When I complained like that to the employees, my husband genuinely apologized. My bad. I sometimes forget. I will make sure to do it next time. You always say that, but you never actually do it, right? I replied with a sigh. I often complain about household matters and such, and perhaps it's because of these frequent exchanges that I've intentionally earned the reputation of being a controlling wife. However, when it comes to actual work, I intend to be aware of my place. I was serious about my work on the field, but I also provided strong support for my husband, who had a tendency to be easily swayed in his role as a company's president. Around the beginning of May, my husband informed me that he wanted to talk. In the office, he had an unusually serious expression on his face. What's this talk about? Actually, I'm thinking of hiring this person. There is a resume on the desk. The resume photo is of an attractive but somewhat listless looking woman. Checking her background, she's 45 years old the same age as my husband, and attended the same primary and middle schools. Do you happen to know her? Oh yes, she's Margaret. 
She's my childhood friend. I bumped into her the other day. She's a divorcee, and it seems she returned to her hometown with her child last month. She's a single mother, you see. She mentioned that she's been struggling to find a job and is having a hard time. I thought I would give her a helping hand due to our old friendship. I listen to my husband's words and offer my input. Looking at her background alone, she seemed like a suitable fit for our company. She seems to have some office experience from her temp jobs, and I believe she can do the job. What do you think? Well, I think it's a good idea. However, let's start her with warehouse work like the other new employees. I convey my thoughts, and my husband nods with relief. His childhood friend. Who joined the company as a mid-career hire quickly became friendly and familiar with her new colleagues. Looks like she will fit in well. That's good. I feel relieved observing Margaret's demeanor, but I was still troubled at the office. The reason for my concern was the recent impact of rising prices, which had been giving both sellers and buyers a headache. As I reviewed the financial records, a sigh escaped naturally. My husband had been working late at the company after employees had left quite often lately. Sometimes he even worked late into the next day. This had been going on for about a month, and I couldn't help but worry. Moreover, time isn't it getting excessive lately? I pointed out my husband's frequent overtime. However, he frowned deeply and responded with irritation. Shut up. There's nothing I can do about it. It's because of this inflation. I'm working hard to protect our company, so don't complain. He retorts with a raised voice. Lately, it seemed like he was getting more irritable and annoyed when I talked to him, possibly due to stress. Then maybe I should stay and help with the overtime. When I offered, my husband's eyes widened, and he shook his head in a fluster. No, really. You should go home and rest. I can manage on my own. I can concentrate better when working alone. It felt like he was implying that I was a hindrance when I was around. My husband disliked me staying for overtime. He believed that he could work more efficiently alone. But I heard recently that a similar business got robbed. Isn't it dangerous to be here all alone so late at night? The theft targeted the safe and the goods that were supposed to be transported, and it was said that thieves were after money and food. I shivered at the thought of the worsening security situation. If my husband kept working late all alone, there was a risk of becoming a target. I suggested it might be better to finish work earlier, but my husband just chuckled. It's just a coincidence that another business in the same industry got targeted. There is no guarantee it will be next. You worry too much. It's irritating. Forget about me and go home and get some rest. You are getting in the way of my work. But you are being too persistent. Can you listen to the company present me? Since when did you become the boss here? My husband pushed me out of the office in frustration. There was no point in arguing with him when he was in this mood. Reluctantly, I said, "Take care," and went outside. But I couldn't help but worry. Our budget was tight under the current circumstances, but maybe we should consider increasing the number of security cameras. While thinking about that, I looked back at the office. That's when I noticed something moving in the darkness. I didn't think it was a gang of robbers. Ah, startles! I froze in place, but then I heard a cat's meow coming from the moving shadow. It was just a cat. It looked like a shadow of a person to me. It seemed like I had been on edge due to our earlier discussion about robbers. Relieved, I made my way home. The installation of the security cameras was scheduled when my husband was on a business trip. He would likely oppose it, so this was a convenient time. With the increased number of cameras, 
I felt a bit more at ease. A few days later, there was a personal change for Margaret. My husband had mentioned that due to a shortage of staff, Margaret, who had office experience, would be transferred to an office position, and that decision had been officially made. I felt a bit uneasy about this sudden personnel change, but it was my husband's decision. I didn't plan to make a fuss about it. In reality, Margaret seems willing to take an overtime work, which my husband found helpful. It bothered me a little that my husband opposed me working overtime, but was fine with Margaret. Frank had mentioned that working with non family members created a sense of professionalism and made it easier than working overtime as a couple. I tilted my head, observing my husband's behavior. On a certain day, for my husband's birthday, I was waiting at home with a few employees to surprise him. Hearing it was a surprise party, even people from the same industry like my uncle Milton, who was my father in law's brother, and executives from our regular clients came over. We used to have surprise parties like this quite often in the past. Every time, my husband would be surprised, but also very happy. This month, with the efforts of all our employees, we finally started making a little profit. I thought it was a good time for a somewhat grand party. Today, I had confirmed that my husband didn't have too much work, but he still hadn't come back. I apologized for keeping everyone waiting. I told him to come back as early as possible today. Well, well, if he's busy, there's nothing we can do. He will be back soon. Despite what my uncle said, there was no sign of my husband returning. I called him several times, but he didn't answer. Is he taking too long? The rover hasn't been called yet, and I'm starting to worry. A sense of uneasy crossed my mind. Concerned, I remember that I could check the footage from the security cameras I had recently installed using my smartphone. When I did, what is this? I stood there pale, shocked, and my employees looked at my phone in surprise. On my smartphone, there was a video of my husband engaging in an affair in his office. Upon closer inspection, it appeared that his affair partner was none other than Margaret. What's going on here? Even Milton, who was known for being devoted to his wife, looked disgusted, as if he was watching something filthy. Th this must be some kind of mistake. In a rush to remain calm, I accidentally turned up the volume on my phone. The indecent sounds of my husband and his affair partner filled the room, and his infidelity was inadvertently exposed to the employees and important clients. Everyone stood there, their faces drained of color, at a loss for words. In this situation, there was no room for a surprise party. We decided to call it a night. The next morning, my husband came home late, and when I asked him what had happened, he casually replied, I was out with Milton, and we were drinking late, and he let me stay over. Oh, with Milton you say? Well, Milton was at our house last night. Anger welled up inside me, as my husband told that blatant lie. It seemed that he had been lying about working late for a while now. Frank wanted to get me out of the office as quickly as possible, because he wanted to meet with Margaret. I was in the way. I can't forgive him. Just watch. I've had enough. I hired a private detective to investigate the affair, and I had my employees look into Margaret's behavior at work. It turned out that she had been slacking off, arriving late, and there were even reports of her engaging in romantic behavior with my husband when they thought nobody was watching. Apparently, they thought no one at the company had noticed. What's more, that meal I heard outside the office, which I thought was a cat, it turns out it wasn't a cat at all. Margaret was imitating a cat to cover up her secret meetings with my husband. An employee who was still at the scene witnessed it all. 
The employee who witnessed the affair couldn't bring themselves to speak to me, probably out of concern. Finally, I handed the detective agency's report to my husband when he returned from work. What on earth is this? You are having an affair with Margaret, aren't you? You traitor! You're the worst! W what Why the sudden outburst? At first, my husband seemed shaken with a pale face, but he started to become more defiant when he realized he couldn't escape. Well, if I have been caught, there's no helping it. Yeah, that's right. Margaret, who is prettier than you and easier to get along with, is more appealing. You make it sound like it was all my fault in the first place, but it was you yourself who caused me to cheat on you. I'm sick and tired of your constant nagging. He began shifting the blame for his affair onto me, saying that it was my fault due to my nagging. I couldn't help but be infuriated by that. Don't blame others. The fact that you have a gullible personality is a root cause, isn't it? Shut up! It's because of your nagging that I got sick of it. If you have a problem, I will divorce you right now. I will even fire you from the company. My husband became angry and threatened to divorce and fire me. Fine. Understood. I had been prepared for such words and had already packed my belongings. With only the essentials, I left the house and moved to a hotel. A week later, I was awakened by a barrage of phone calls from my husband. I ignored the call, but it persisted so I had no choice but to answer it, and my husband sounded impatient over the phone. Hey, what's going on here? All the employees have quit. Is this your doing? I haven't done anything. It's entirely the employee's decision. They can't follow you anymore. So I've already arranged jobs for them at Milton's company. My husband was left speechless by my words. It appears that the employees noticed Margaret, who was initially a friendly and hard-working person, undergo a drastic change in attitude since the time my husband started having an affair. They seem to be harboring resentment toward my husband for being aware of her deteriorating work attitude and silently tolerating it. The strain from work had taken its toll and the employees couldn't bear it any longer. At that point, when my husband fired me, they had had enough of him. Even our major client decided they couldn't continue their deals with us. And so, my husband's company went bankrupt. I divorced him without any sympathy and managed to get a decent amount of compensation. It wasn't a fortune, but it felt like the perfect final blow. Later, I heard that Margaret seems to have approached my ex-husband for money. Perhaps because of his position as a small-scale CEO, she assumed he had a lot of wealth. Margaret seems to have had a man who was supporting her financially, a man who was, in fact, a member of the recently infamous gang of robbers that got arrested. She was arrested for hiding that man. I had heard that Margaret was a single mother, but I wondered what had happened to her child. It turned out that Margaret had pretended to be a single mother to gain sympathy from my ex-husband. She had claimed that her child was in a sensitive phase of adolescence and thus had him not to meet the child. Due to this, my ex-husband was unaware of the truth. In reality, Margaret's ex-husband had been raising the child, and Margaret and the child were estranged. Furthermore, my ex-husband had been burdened with Margaret's death. Frank is really a gullible man. It appeared he had been coerced into taking on Margaret's death, depleting his savings almost entirely. A while later, I heard a rumor from a former employee that they had seen what seems to be my ex-husband as a homeless person near the company's former location. After that, I was entrusted with a subsidiary of Milton's company and gradually improved its performance. The employees continued to work comfortably, almost as they used to. 
the somewhat unfunny tale of discovering a thief inside while implementing external security measures remains a topic of discussion to this day.